Don't go. Hey, we are here live on DJN TV. Thank you guys Hi. for joining us out there on the internet world, Facebook, YouTube. You're joining us to talk music tonight. Yes, yes, yes. I this now for those of you watching who have have watched the shows are, that we've done in the past, you do realize that both Brian and Jay are, are talking music is a little difficult for them. They're not big fans of this part of it. They really enjoy talking in numbers and and sales and margins and all that. So we're going to try to bring them out of their operational shell just a little bit. Operational procedures, yes. If they can Excel put sheets. if they can not, put together a handbook on how to, that's them. So sheets, not beats. This will. be be a little bit of a stretch for them to talk music tonight, but we're hoping we can make this happen. We'll give it a go. Do what we can. Tonight, oh my goodness, that's not, that ugly mug on that ad is not one of us, that's for sure. There right, we go. I'll make sure that it's streaming properly. It's like, oh man, that was weird. So, gentlemen, tonight we want to talk about some forgotten hits, and this isn't looking back at any one specific uh, decade or era. What I want, really wanted to do is kind of talk about some of those forgotten hits, and we've we've alluded to these in the past on some different shows. But tonight, mm -hmm. to share some of those hits that we play that that are kind of semi unique to us, or things that that we have played in the past that have been kind of fun and unique that, and why those why we brought we bring those out and why we play those and why they have significance to us. And then, Brian, you mentioned after the show, in the chill room, you guys will go, you'll be able to play and, and have some fun musically with uh, some of the things we're talking about tonight. I'd like to, if anybody is interested in any of the tracks that I'm talking about, if you haven't heard them, because we can't play them here, YouTube's kind of fickle about that. I thought it would be fun to invite everyone to djntv.com slash chill, and I'll play some tunes for you for a while. Just some of the stuff that we've talked about, Jay can, John can, anybody can. <laughs> We've been doing a lot of that in there. We're, we're playing songs, and everybody kind of takes turns. But maybe I'll take over for an hour and <coughs> have some fun. Have and, and maybe you know, maybe you don't. But I've got some fun ones that I want to share with you today. Excellent. Excellent. Sounds good. Excellent. So most of the ones that I was kind of looking at tonight and to talk about are coming out of that 80s era because that's – when you know we grew up and we do we we're doing our things and where the, really the the passion for music from the 80s is what started me into the dj world but the ironic part of that is if i look back it was actually my the in, influence of my father and aunt in the 70s that was the, really what set the stage for me to appreciate what well, happened in the 80s to move on beyond that yeah. but um, we're going to spend that's where i kind of figured i would kind of spend uh spend my time because i know that jay's going to go to the disco era because that's a big time for him i uh, was there somebody will somebody yeah. go there. <laughs> was there um what i thought would be fun to talk about too would be songs that aren't necessarily the the dance songs because i think that's where we put shackles on ourselves because we think to ourselves, well, it's not a dance song, so it's not anything that's relevant. No, we can do things for cocktail and lounge. Yeah. And especially now, I mean, I did a, that event last week or two weeks ago, whatever it was, when people were just kind of chilling out a lot of the time. So you could play some wacko stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes during those cocktail and dinner times, if you play something that's a little different, Jake can tell you that this is a true thing. People will perk up and go, what is this? Or, oh my yeah. gosh, I haven't heard this in a long time. I can't believe you're playing this. It's fun to be a bit of a, you know, a little different. You know, instead of playing the same old stuff all the time, you play something that people haven't heard in a long time. And those are the ones that I like to throw on once in a while. And those are some of the ones I want to talk about. And it's it's reading. It's It's no different. And that's the fun of our job is every wedding, every group's a little different. And you kind of key in on you know, what I call eight to 80, you know, you've got your young crowd where you can read pretty well, you've got the middle 20 to 30, 40, you're like, okay, I've got their number. And then you go to the older crowd that's often dismissed and overlooked. And I remember 10, 15, 20 years ago when his attitude about weddings was, I'll play the music you want after 10. So I'll just play the old stuff early. And then when they leave at 10, that 10 to 11, 10 to 12, I'll just play the new cool banger hip hop stuff. And I was always, well, I'm going to play Usher. Yeah. Within three songs, but my grandmother's here. I'm like, yeah, but she'll dance to it. Cause I'm going to come in after BG staying alive. 
Mm-hmm. I think or I'm going to come in with yeah. swing. Or I'm going to, and I've just, I've always had tunnel vision about old, new, old, new. And it's fun. The other night when I did my Friday night set, I was adamant in my mind, not for the crowd because there's no crowd. Um, I wanted to mix 80s and 90s. And I mean, it had to be a song from the 80s into a song that had to be from the 90s. And I've got to go back and look over the history. There were some really good mixes. And it's not a pat on the back. It's more, excuse me, I never would have thought to play this and this together. Mm -hmm. But they worked really, really well. What you're talking about. Yeah, what what you're talking about is something that I was guilty of because I would do the old stuff first and then I would do the newer stuff later. But now I do what you're saying that you've always done because yeah, you know it, it works very well. Brian, and, and yeah. I, Brian, give, me, hang, well, Brian guess, guess, hang on just a second. Brian, give me a little bit more microphone. Your your Jay's really really loud tonight compared to oh. you. So okay, well, and that shocks anyone. Why? <laughs> right. Okay. Audio settings. There you go. Yeah, uh, give what us a little What is better more. now? Because I'm closer. Maybe I think you're. Yeah, you're talking a little closer to it. But yeah, if you could just give us a little bit more, so that way I can, I can adjust everything here. How about now? Okay, now you're now you're much stronger. Is that too much? No, don't. I can bring. I would rather bring you bring it down. Okay, about that. There we go. Perfect. That'll okay, be we're better. We're gonna do that. And Excellent. I'm gonna just say right off the bat that I made this comment before we went on the air when Dan Carpenter was in the room incredibly jealous of the pacing and the timing that John and Dan have on their show. And I'd like to see us do something like that, but I know that's not going to happen. So it's just wishful thinking. I told him it was the problem. The, the, it, it was the Nick James influence that just has ruined our timing. It has. You got to figure go- it out there, John. It's, not, it's pretty easy. Just get done <laughs> from promo only and just be quiet. Who goes first? Um, I want to start. Uh, so, so one of the songs that um, that is always kind of a fun one. I, I was a fan of Men at Work when they came out, and mm-hmm. the song "Down Under" is kind of one of my little hidden favorites to toss in at the at a time when you've got that kind of maybe a cocktail, that bebop uh, time frame between, because you've got those people who remember the song and it's yet got a kind of a catchy little campy enough feel to it. Um, it was just just a fun song, and and it's been it was well received when it came out. Maybe it didn't chart as high as as many other songs that were out at the time. It actually did very well. It did yeah. well. Yeah, um, it did very well. Uh, but it um, <laughs> it's just it's one of those that even today, because you'll in Walmart, you know, or wherever you're shopping, once in a while something like that will pop up, and and uh, it's it's just kind of a neat little a neat little tune. So, uh, kind of one of my my uh, callback or or throwback songs would be Down Under from uh, Men at Work. I'm the weird one when every time that I have the urge to play something like that by minute work, I'll go way back and I'll, I won't play the a track or the B track. The B track would be down under the a track is who can it be now down under would be the B track that the, but I would go down to like the F track on that album, which would be like, it's a mistake. No, you'd really go because nobody has heard that song and Walmart. They've only heard it back in 1983 or 1982 when it came out. And it's like, holy crap, I haven't heard this song in 40 years. <laughs> that, that to me is fun. So I'll do that. But to talk about my first track, I guess, tonight. This is the one that I, if I really go back and I think about it, this is the song that kind of corrupted me and, and made me the geek who's here today. It's almost... God damn it. It's almost by autobiographical, but it's <laughs> okay. Just to give you a little background when I was about two or three years old, my family used to put me on top of the kitchen table with a hairbrush and I would sing the chorus of the song like to the 45 that my mom bought. And I knew the chorus by heart and I knew exactly what it meant. And, and it was meaningful to me even then, which is like, you know, life is kind of hard, but, you know, music really kind of brings you up. It's, it's, the, it's the thing. Music mm-hmm. is the thing. And that is a song by a band called Reunion. And the song is Life is a Rock, but the radio rolled me. Nobody plays that song anywhere. And it's a great song. And it would be so much fun to throw that in somewhere in the evening. And people my age or older, you're, you're going to probably say, 
holy crap, I can't believe you're playing this. It's kind of a bubble. It's very much a bubblegum song. Mm -hmm. It's a good tune. If you guys don't know it, uh, I'll play it for you tonight. Yeah, I, if you I, do know it, I'll play I, it for you tonight. I was going to say, I, I don't. That's one I, I don't think I've ever heard of. You've heard that song. It's, it's almost like a rap. Okay, the so. guy's talking really fast, and he's trying to name every single pop artist from the, you know, since I guess the early six or maybe the fifties. He's making that attempt. He's, he's mentioning everybody from Elvis, Steely Dan, ZZ Top, Aretha Franklin. Uh, Carly Simon, Fleetwood Mac. He's mentioning them all, but he's doing it really, really fast. He's like speed talking. And then the chorus kicks in. It's a great song. If you don't know it or you don't remember it, please give it a listen. Jay remembers that song. I, yeah, I remember it, but I'm thinking of another one. What was the one that Def Leppard covered a few years ago? Um, and it had two hits. It had the original, and then there was some soap opera actor in the 80s that had another hit with it. Um It'll come to me. The 80s. But it's similar in that it talked about the old music, but it did it more from the 70s perspective. It talked about like more of the glam stuff. Mm -hmm. um, well, this one wasn't necessarily at all about old songs. It was songs up to the to current the day, artists. which was like 74. So it was mentioning all these artists. And I mean, rock and roll at the time, what was it? You know, pretty, it was not even 20 years old yet. No, it was relatively, so, you know, you know. Yeah, it was R and B and rock and roll, and they were just it was just like ra almost a rap. If you listen to it, it was like a really fast rap, and then it goes into the chorus. It's a beautiful song, and if you don't know it, give it a listen. There's a video on YouTube actually that does little clips of everybody they mention in the song, like really quick clips. It's kind of fun, and I'll play that in the showroom tonight for you guys to watch. It's it's a cool tune. Yeah, I, I yeah, can't say I've ever. Uh, I've not heard that one before, so that was that's new to me. You've heard it, John. I know I you've just heard listened it. to it. It's like I don't think unless again uh, you're gonna listen to it. Go, oh my gosh! I haven't heard this song since I was a little kid, and that's the point. They're playing these kind of songs, and that's what's fun about them. Yeah, reunion. Life is a rock mm -hmm. is the song, and and yeah, that's my first one. Forgotten hits. What do you got, Jay? Um, it's tough because a lot of the stuff that I would run to, it's difficult to do at events. So I'm always kind of undercover and I usually fall into tracks that I don't think had the stature they deserved. The most recent would be Float by Switchfoot that I started playing religiously at weddings and getting comments constantly because it's just an upbeat, fun song. It's a kind of Christian rock band from mm -hmm. San Diego. So being that we're in San Diego... You know, there was that time, and we've had this discussion where I was playing Ryko Scott, remind me, because it was in a Geico commercial with the caveman like 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And I started playing it at weddings during cocktail. And people were like, I love this song, but I don't know where it's from or how I know it. I'm like, oh, it's on a TV commercial. The things that I love, you know, I'm like you, John, going back to family, I was heavily influenced by the folk by old jazz. My dad was a huge George Shearing fan. So I got into George Shearing and Coltrane, Thelonious Monk. My mom was more into like Jane Oliver and, you know, the folk of the day, Joan Baez. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would kill to have a wedding where I could figure out a way to play the night they drove old Dixie down by either Joan Baez or Arlo Guthrie. Cause that's the stuff that initially I started with today on my drive back from Vegas. No one knows. Um, I couldn't get Vicki Lawrence um, the night. Um, the night could, the lights went out in Georgia. It went, went out in Georgia, and I could not get that out of my head. I love the opportunities to play those, but I, I don't find that my groups, I guess I, maybe I'm not as gutsy as Brian on this, where I'll look at the opportunity and say, I'm going for it. I'm going to play Alan O'Day, Undercover Angel from yeah. 77, because I love this track. <laughs> You know, I mean, if that was the case, you'd hear old Billy Joel, old Elton John, and old Barry Manilow. And I'd figure sure. what to play, you know, could it be magic? But I'd also stand there with tears rushing down my face. So that's a little like, sappy. For, for Yeah, that's what I yeah. mean. You know, right. but it's so funny now that clients are coming to us with this Yacht Rock stuff. And I'm just like, you have no idea. This was prepubescent music for me about England Jan and John Ford Coley trying to like, meet up with girl and you listen to the words now it's like you know i'm not talking moving in and i just want to you know i don't want to change your mind but 
this warm wind. So if you could just come over for like an hour and then leave, like <laughs> seriously, this is what I was so in love with at the time. Like, well, but, it's, it's, you know, it's refreshing compared to what they're talking about today. I guess, well, so. yeah, you know, and I, I have this discussion with myself as I'm sure you two do. You hear something new and you just think there's no friggin' way. Somebody's like, I've talked to Connor and Colin, my kids about music. And I'm like, Oh, you like CCR? Well, check this out. No way is somebody in 30 years going to their grandkids or their kids. Oh, you like this? Well, check out this Cardi B song. Yeah, I said it. I don't care if Cardi's watching. <laughs> it's not going to hold. No. You're not going to be sitting here going like, well, I'm at you know Walmart or wherever, and I'm hearing like, I like it like that by Cardi and Bad Bunny. Maybe you will. I don't know. Hopefully I'm I don't not going to hear it. Well, what I'd like you to do right now is go in the driveway, shake your fist at the sky for a while, and let John have a turn because he's <laughs> go got another it. song for us. So again, I'm going to stick in that that '80s time. Um, uh, Howard Jones is a a uh, he had some some tracks out there, and one of them that I like to toss in is "New Song" from Howard Jones. It his big ones, uh, um, uh, "Life in One Day," uh, "No One Is to Blame." I think "No One Is to Blame" is probably that was his biggest one. Uh, I think so. But it, "New Song" has it's kind of that little that little popish uh, 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 the electronic song sound of that really was Howard Jones at, at his at his best with his music side of it. And it was something that people will remember, but they won't it isn't the main. If you'd say Howard Jones, they'd be thinking some of the other songs. So this is kind of digging yeah. a little deeper with New Song. I think New Song was his first hit. This is the first one I ever heard. First hit in America anyway. And I did like it, but the one that just blew me away and I don't hear it a lot now was his follow up to that, which was What is Love? Mm -hmm. Love that song. Yep. Oh my Love that God, song. that is a gorgeous song. A beautiful track. Yeah, it's I mean, it's a very no well written song. Pardon? Better than no one is to blame. <clears throat> yes. In my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Yes. And and yeah, I I've got some personal memories attached to that one that I won't get into because it's PG yeah. show. But it's a great song regardless. No matter yeah. no matter what my experience happened to be. On the well, if I say Human play. League, what what song would you play by Human League? Either Mirror Man or Keep Feeling Fascination. Okay, John. Fasc yeah, Fascination would have been. I would have gone to Fascination myself. And see, 100%, I go to these are the things that dreams are made of because it's the first time I heard of them. And I know where I was when that song hit. I was a lifeguard. It was the summer of 82. You get these things in your head. And I think, I think we're not only trying to get something that we think the crowd will understand, but I think there's that sense of like, do you put yourself out there to kind of show who you are. I mean, you talk about, when you talk about, you know, men at work, even though I'd run to overkill, and then you mentioned Howard Jones, in my head I go, oh man, I'd play Nick Kershaw. Wouldn't it be good? Because you're going to get that response. The other night I played Thompson Twins, Wish You Were Here. Nice. Why? Because I found out that Ryan, the hunky guy from 16 Candles, just turned 60. And Long Duck Dong, who is actually from Utah, which Cameron uh, J Hughes, what was his first name? John, John Hughes, John, yeah. didn't know, thought he was actually from Japan and had to do that accent at the read through because they're like, wait a second, you're not Japanese. He's like, no, I'm from Ogden, Utah. <laughs> they're like, no, you got to be Japanese. He's like, oh, so sorry. Like he did the accent. He just <laughs> turned 65. So it's that sense of, you know, I, I don't think people realize how big that group is that gets 70s, 80s, and now even 90s stuff. Mm -hmm. Because let's face it, you're going back 30 years. I mean, if you were 10 then, you're 40 now. Like, I hate to be the one to break that news to anybody, but as everyone gets older, they look backwards. I never understood that reading guitar player in the 70s. Like, how come Ace Freely's talking about Rick Derringer and Ted Nugent and Pete Townsend? How come he's not talking about the new guys today? And then you realize, because that's what we do. We don't talk about the new guys today. Hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. There's comfort in the old guys back then, you know, and there's comfort in that music. If Scott's here, Scott knows that Frankie Knuckles, Donna Summer track I played in the chill room at Photo Booth Expo. I mean, we all sat there and geeked out on it like, but it meant something. It was mm -hmm. like, this is beautiful, beautiful music. And I think you can still do that. I'll tell you what, if you don't play John Coltrane at a wedding, 
or Miles Davis, go get the nine minute version of So What by Miles Davis and just play it sometime at a wedding during dinner. And I guarantee you'll have two or three people come up to you and compliment you and be shocked and just go, wow, this is amazing. I can't believe you're playing this because it's real music. See, all you had to do was say Howard Howard Jones Jones. and he went off on that riff. I'm ready to go. I think it's my turn. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. So I'm going to talk about one that maybe we haven't completely forgotten about, but I think a lot of people stopped playing and I think it would be nice to start playing it again. In fact, I've done it this, I've done it this year, I think. And, and that is um, Martin Solvik with Dragonette with hello from like 2010. It was like, yeah, that's recent. Right. It's pretty recent, but I think it's off people's radar because they've been thinking about all these other things. I think it's a fun one to throw back in there if you're looking for those DJ Nugget things. That might be one of those I'd throw out there for now, just to bounce around a little bit. I I mean, I remember doing clubs in the early 90s, and I was doing throwbacks from 1982, 1983, and people were losing their minds. So I'm kind of thinking about that now. I mean, you can do those kind of throwbacks now. Yeah. And people may say, oh, my gosh, I haven't heard this song in 10 years. Might be kind of fun. So we joke pres- about that. We joke about the throwback stuff that I do every show we're <clears throat> done. I figure a way to work in Alice DJ, Better Off Alone, mm-hmm. The Launch, Sandstorm, Zombie. I mean, these tracks are going on 20 years old. Mm-hmm. And you know what? People do really enjoy them. I was shocked recently when I played Zed. I played Clarity because it just fit. And people were like, oh, my God, I love this song. Because, again, you're tapping into a memory as well as a good song. Let's let's be upfront and honest. There's good music and then there's music you don't really care for that may not have been cultivated quite, you know, quite the right way. But there is solid good music. Things like Sweet Caroline. Probably the reason it was never remixed is because it's just a great song as it is. But what's your forgotten hit pick? It is your turn. In in that realm, I'd probably well, any realm. Any realm. Any realm. Believe it or not, the one I've been going to in the last couple of years at weddings, I've been leaving, staying alive, and I've been jumping over to Night Fever. Oh, yeah, it's a good tune. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's a little faster. It's like 109, 110 versus 104. But I find that it does a great job in not only in that BPM range, but I think it's a better song. I think it plays better in the movie. And if you see the movie, Staying Alive is good. But the Night Fever section is better. You know the story on that song? On Night Fever? No. Barry Gibb wrote that song. They had done a lot of music, and they got with a new producer, and they did, I think it was the main chorus album with Jive talking on it, Nights on Broadway. And it did really well. It was an R&B thing, and it was very a di- different sound for the Bee Gees. And so Barry was writing this other stuff. And in the meantime, the New Yorker had done an article called "The Tribal Rights of Saturday Night" about the whole yes. disco era thing. Yep. And, and then Sigwood came in. Pardon? Is this where Stigwood comes in on it? I think that's who it is. The guy who wrote the movie. Yeah. He, he calls Barry Gibb, and he says, "Hey, I'm going to do this movie about the whole disco movement. I'm trying to figure out what to call it." He says, "Oh, I just wrote a disco song." It's called Night Fever. You should call the movie Night Fever. You can have my song. So I can't call the movie Night Fever. That sounds like an STD. So <laughs> they changed it to Saturday Night Fever, and it still kind of sounds like an STD, but that's how it started. So all of those songs that were BG specific songs were written before they even knew the movie was out or the movie was happening. So those songs had already been written before the movie was shot. Or written. Side so. note, do you think they're underappreciated for the immense amount of tracks, talent, and music they've given the world? Yes. If if somebody asked me if you can have anybody's writing ability, would it be Prince? Would it be it would be very good. Because he wrote for yeah, everyone and he was consistent for a very long time. When I think of songs that he wrote, the one that comes to mind, and it's not even my one of my favorite songs. But the song that I think has the most hooks in it than any other pop song ever written is Frankie Valli's Grease. And that's a very good song. 
that song has like 12 hooks in it. Yeah. You know, most artists today, if they came up with a, any one of the hooks that are in the song Grease, oh, they they'd have an true. entire album and yeah. they would have a hit on every song. Very yeah. all in the one song. He just blew them all in one song. I think it's amazing. Yeah, that's it. That's so. I saw that when it was on a couple weeks ago, and that I said to my kids, I'm like, this is such a great song. And it was just like that. Yeah, there's hook after hook after hook in that thing. And you lose track yeah, of them after a while. Because I've, yeah. I've done it. I've tried to count them on my hand. I'm like, holy crap, there's another one. And that's that there's actually a two part version. Comes in with that, like, like that's another hook. That's all hook yeah. too. Yeah. No. The Amazing. Bridge. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, it's, that's an awesome, obs- awesome observation on your behalf on that. John, what do you got? Um, so John Mellencamp is kind of a, a, another, if I, if I've got Huey Lewis up there somewhere, you know, towards the top of my, my stack of, of artists, I appreciate and Mellencamp's towards the top somewhere, just yeah. somewhere up there towards the top and Mellencamp's up there, uh, towards that end of the spectrum. Also uh, a lot of, I've heard so good. Jack and Diane are probably the mainstays, but the one I actually prefer to play is the authority song, uh, just because it's, it's still, it's got that, that kind of an upbeat thing, but it's the one that isn't the common. So people are like, Oh yeah, I remember that song. So it's a good one. I have a different go-to John Cougar Mellon Camp or John Camp and Cougar Mellon or whatever you want yeah, to call yeah, it yeah, yeah. that time. He was playing around with the name thing. The one that I like to play is off the Aha album and it's called Tumbling Down. Mm-hmm. Or Crumbling Down. Crumbling, Crumbling Down. Down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to do that one. I think I think that one's fun. In fact, I think that might be on the same, same album. Same album, yep. Same album. Nineteen uh, eighty three uh-huh, yeah. is when it mm-hmm. came out. Yeah. yeah. Tim Ryan, that, I, I like that one. I mean Hurt So Good is also a good song. The one that no one ever plays, and I don't even know if they should or not. I don't know if anybody remembers it, is Small Paradise. Remember that one? That one I don't. It was on his first album. I'm going to yeah. give it a considerable mention here because it's one of those weirdo songs that music people, you guys all have heard it, but you didn't even know it was him mm-hmm. and you've forgotten about it. So remind me to play that in the music uh, on the show on tonight. Small Paradise by John Cougar. Small Paradise. Okay. Yeah. It's on that album. I think it's self titled. It's black and white. He's got a cigarette hanging out of his mouth and his hair is shorter. Um, but yeah, that's Small I know Paradise. That album. <clears throat> yeah. I know what you're good song but i don't know that it would fit anywhere with what we do it's just mm-hmm. a cool song yeah the one song that uh, we had played for for a long from uh, john cougar was uh, rock in the usa yeah that one was was like the mainstay that was played for the longest time and then it, it just fell off the radar completely was that off of scarecrow uh, was it off scarecrow scarecrow's a great song I'm not sure right at the top of my head if that was off that one or where where I, I pulled that one from. John Cougar's a weird one for me because a lot of his songs are kind of Indiana biographical. Mm-hmm. And I'm originally from there. And I, I've done a lot of time there going back for sick relatives and things my entire life. And, and as you're and, driving and, through, I, yeah, you hear the songs playing in your head. Yeah, it's all, yeah. you know broke farmers and broke people and little pink houses. And it's like, ah, you know what? I've, I lived it. I don't need to hear the song. <laughs> yeah. Drive you know, I'd rather hear a song about someplace I've never been like Jamaica or something. That's kind of fun. You know, <laughs> Indiana, you've been to Indiana. Yeah, it's, it's, it's corn and uh, sweet water. That's about it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. I like sweet water. I yeah. Like but corn. that's, yeah. Other than that, it's kind of corn. So lots of corn. Lots well, it's funny because I, this is a good segue the track that I, and I think he's underappreciated as well, even though I'm sure enough people in the room, because right now we have 1,800 people in the room. So of the 1,800, they may say, no, Jay, he really appreciated. But I will always take the opportunity to play Last Dance from Mary Jane by Tom Petty or Free Falling, like whenever possible. Out here, especially because Free Falling was written in California, and if there's two lines in the song. If you're driving on the 10 freeway where you pass Reseda and it's like you see Reseda Boulevard as an exit and you're like, oh, immediately you're like free fall and gets in your head. So, you know, he's another one of those artists that I get chili peppers. You get chili peppers on Reseda Boulevard. 
Why? He mentions it in Under the Bridge, I think. Rece I don't think so. I think he does. Reseda? I think he does. I think it's in that one, or maybe it's in Danny California. One of those songs in the It Jesus might be in Danny California. I don't think it's uh, in it. It might be Under the Bridge. We'll have to look at the lyrics or something. But it's one of those artists that I think we 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 tend to like do our songs for the year or two then we get new ones and new ones and new ones and that somebody gave me grief a little while ago about playing usher yeah at the wedding i did in june They're like wow well, see so you're playing something topical and it's like did you notice i had a full dance floor or is the point to play something new you you play what makes sense and you try to interject how you feel to the point where it makes you know dance wise it's tough if it's not something that's newer for dance, it's hard to get people to dance to what they may not remember. But for dinner and cocktail, you can have a field day. Dave I think we've Clevin talked about, you know, what's that? Dave Clevenger in the comment section, going back to the John Cougar thing, he's mentioning, mentioning Ain't Even Done With The Night, which was also on the first album. Oh, John that's Cougar. a great song. Mm -hmm. That's a really good song. That was like, the I think, the, the bigger hit, where Small Paradise was the smaller hit off of that album. But yeah, it's a really good tune. And Dave and I are from the same city in Indiana, by the way. What's the, um, the, um, the Pat Benatar track. Which one? No, she had a hit and it's John Cougar's song. Oh, I don't I know. I think it's, I need a lover. He wrote it and then she took it. I know. I need a lover that won't drive me crazy. I've yeah. heard the John Cougar version a thousand times, which is also I mean, first album. Pat Benatar did it as well. It's on her first album. Is it really? Hmm. What, Crimes yeah. of Passion? Is that her first album? Is that the first album? I thought it was. I yeah. believe. And which is a great album, by the way, that no one, I mean, hit me with your best shot, but that album is full of great songs. It's yeah. A really no, good she album. Had, she, Treat yeah. Me Right and all kinds of good stuff on that one. I will double check my fact finding here, nice. on Mr. Yeah, I got nothing on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one I don't. Um, whose turn is it? I, I think it worked to you. Oh, how about something else from the seventies? How about some seventies soul? But I'm thinking I'm up tempo. Everything I want to talk about and bring up is up tempo. It's a song by the Blackbirds called "Walking in Rhythm." It's a song that I don't hear anybody play and it's so good i think it's from 74 if you don't know it again i'll play it tonight it's a gorgeous think? song a lot of people are, are going to remember it some older folks and be like holy crap where did you pull this out of it's a good tune real quick pat benatar 1979 in the heat of the night album john cougar mellencamp i need a lover i'll be darned so he wrote was, for her. I heard it with her before I heard it with him. Oh, interesting. I, yeah, I got nothing on that. She was bigger back east, I think New York, and probably it was a different time then. No MTV, no interweb. That's when I was in LA. Music was sold through raincoats in the alley. Yeah, <laughs> right next to the basketball courts in Chinatown, where you bought fireworks. We've all been there. Come on, don't lie. Oh, CB Shaw's here tonight. What's up, dude? Whoa, CB Shaw. Yeah. Vegas guy. It was I Need a Lover by both John and Pat. Good call. Yeah. <laughs> CB, last time I saw him and his beautiful wife were at the NAM show. I and actually hooked him up with DJ Ashba. Hopefully that goes somewhere because they're both in Vegas. That would be cool. CB's a good guy. It's your turn, Jay. Go. Um, you want to go with something more upbeat? You know, the one I often go to that gets way under the radar is <laughs> Can't Change That by Radio. Radio. Yeah, good tune. Yeah. Gary Parker. Really nice uh, song. Um, Ray Parker Jr. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's one I throw in like towards the end of cocktails and 100% get this like, who is this? You know, and thanks to you, I get the same thing now with my new Commodores and Eddie Money Tracks on my Yacht Rock. Would you like to share those with the class since we're talking music here? Actually, G forgotten hits. Jay, before you do that, what was the name of that that song? Because it, it kind of broke up. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, the group is Radio, R-A-Y-D-I-O. And the song is You Can't Change That. It might actually be. Is that a Ray Parker Jr. song or is that a radio song? Um, I believe it's radio. Yeah, it's radio. Okay. Is what I'm, I'm but pulling it's, up here. Ray Parker Jr. is the lead singer on it. Right. 
Yeah. Well, it's like still, I think it's still in the groove is considered a radio track, but it's also a Ray Parker Jr. track. It gets fuzzy. Yeah, it gets, you know. Like the time and more stay in the time. Yes. Mm-hmm. Lionel's got a couple tracks. It's like, oh, it's the Commodores. It's, like, eh, it's actually Lionel. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. yeah. It was. So tell tell them about the Yacht Rock, Yacht Rock tracks that so, I'm like on to that you're using. I'm doing now. Yacht Rock about a month ago in the driveway, and we're talking in the chill room. And I'm like, I got this, guys. Don't worry about it. I got my England Dan. I got my Seals and Cropped. I got this. And then, you know, the czar of music over here, Brian, comes out of nowhere and goes, well, you're going to play, and I'm going to screw the names up. You're going to play, like, How You Smile by the Commodores. I'm like, excuse me? He's like, oh. Hi on Sunshine. What's that? Hi on Sunshine. See, How You Smile translates in Spanish to Hi on Sunshine. <laughs> I'm in California. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought I are we not speaking for the Spanish audience tonight? Yeah. No, no. I apologize. Lo siento. And no. I play it and I'm like, what the f- this is awesome. Like, I no, I'd never heard this track. It's like High on, High on Sunshine by the Commodores is oh. a hidden gem, guys. If you don't oh. know it, check it out. Yeah. It's a gorgeous song. You can throw it in. It is for beautiful. Cocktail. Yeah, it's a nice great song. for that. And you're going to stump people with it. I, I played it for three of my neighbors who are all different looking. Can we say that? Sure. Everything in perspective. But the the four of us together represented every possible combination of humanity. Okay? Right. And the people that I played it for, I said, hey, they requested a lot of funk, some old stuff. So I did the still in the groove. And I'm like, oh, here you go. Oh, man. Love me some Parliament Funkadelic. I'm like, yeah, it's not that. Oh, well, it's got to be Earth, Wind, and Fire. I'm like, no. Nah. So we kept going. I said, here, try this track. And I put it on. They're like, wow, this is amazing. This is, and again, three different guesses. I'm like, actually, it's the Commodores. What? I'm like, yeah. it's, yeah, it's a gorgeous track. Yeah, Young Lionel. There's an Eddie Money track, which, again, I forgot the name on that one. Maybe so I'm a Fool. Maybe I'm a Fool by Eddie Money. Mm-hmm. Great track. It doesn't sound like anything else Eddie Money did. Dude. It's a very oddball Eddie Money track. It almost sounds like a throwback Motown song. Yeah. It's, but I think, it's a nice and track. those are gems when you can find them, and they're not always easy to track. Like, you can just buy the album and try to listen to all the B-side stuff. I did that with Robin Trower, and I do this at a lot of weddings as well. And it's a song called um, Wine of Love. And if you listen, it's only like two and a half minutes long, but if you listen to the words, it's like, let's have a party, let's invite everybody, let's <laughs> celebrate our wedding day. Mm. Like, Oh, this is a no-brainer. I'll play this. Well, you get the right age guy that's into Robin Trower back in the day in the 70s, and they lose it. They're like, oh, my God, this is great. You know? Hold so that thought. It's John's turn. Go. Hold, hold your thought. <laughs> so, John, go. Uh, so, jumping to to a, a band that maybe you guys have heard of, uh, uh, they're out of the San Francisco area, a band called Huey Lewis in the News. They've got a couple of songs out there, and the one I was I, I kind of like to bounce back to when I actually do play them, um, probably play that about half the events. Instead of playing Grand Funk Railroad, Some Kind of Wonderful, I play Huey Lewis and the News' version of Some Kind of Wonderful. Just a little bit different feel to it, almost a little bit more of a swing feel to it in some ways and such. So that's one of those songs that people will be like, hey, this 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 is very similar, but it's not. Who, yeah. who did this version? And so we have that, we're familiar with the song. And then it's like, that sounds like, is it really him? Yes, it is, it is indeed. So It's I, kind of a, a jam band version of it. I mean, because they're a show band. I mean, Huey Lewis and the News, they, that's what they do. They're, they're about performing live, or they were about performing live. And so, yeah, when I think of their version of that song, it's very much a, you know, a smoky bar kind of cool jam session mm-hmm. version of that song. Very much so, yeah. Yep. It gives that, I like that feel to that one when I, when mm-hmm. I play it. Yeah, there are a lot of songs like that where, you know, sometimes you want to play the original, other times there's a remake of it or a re uh, revision of it or something that is just spot on and that's the right one. There are, We've done shows on that before where, you know, there, there, there's the original, but then the, the, the remake is better Mm -hmm. so or just works better for whatever reason yeah let's see it's my turn i'm going to talk about a cut from probably about 91 or 92 
that when I heard it, it was I loved it, and it didn't catch much error because Nirvana was right there, you know. But I thought it was a hot track, and it's um, it's um, Yomanda, got a love for you, but the version that's good is the Hurley's Club mix of it. And there's a radio edit of it too. It's kind of got that Robin S. Show Me Love feel to it. It's a very high energy, up tempo track, but that's a fun one to throw on. And you know, people maybe our age may recognize it. Okay, maybe not people in Upper Minnesota, but I mean, people may recognize it. Oh my gosh, I haven't heard this in 30 years. So that's that's just that how I wanted to make I got real quiet there. Yeah. Like <laughs> Joe mentions cruising. By Huey Lewis and Gwyneth Paltrow, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, I gotta say, yo, I love that song. And I was in Australia when they were playing it on the radio, which is the only place it charted. By the way, it was in Australia, <laughs> but that is a great song. I, I really like that version of it. So, just a, a considerable mention on that one. And Jay, good news, it's your turn. You can talk again. Oh. Well, you threw me so hard with that last one. Even I, I had something in my head, and I was just like, "Wait, what did he say? What what song was that?" Robin S. And it immediately brought when you said Robin S. To it's not a guilty pleasure track. I just think it's a good track, and I will drop this. And I did play it the other night, and it's at a period of time where it's starting to get some throwback a little bit, and that is "Candy" by Mandy Moore. Ooh! Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. Because it's 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 that period, that early, not early, but like that mid nineties when, you know, the Britneys and Christinas came out and then you had the beef kind of team and Mandy Moore kind of filled in that gap. Mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. gone on to be an incredible actress and nothing like the song. But it was one of those tracks that's kind of like I'm like, oh, I th I think I can play this again. I felt that way about five years ago with Crystal Waters. I'm like I can play Crystal Waters again. It's been so long yeah. that I'm just going to play Crystal Waters. And I didn't realize that everyone loved Crystal Waters. So Yeah, that's amazing, too. When you, we, Okay, in the old days, those of us who are older remember that it was all about the next hit. We were really liking what was going on, but yeah. the next hit, we were, we were ready for it. And some stuff, it just got shoved to the back, but it was amazing stuff. I watched some of those reaction videos that that it, oh, yeah. part, younger people do and and it's funny because i i watched one last night and one of the guys who was doing the reaction paused it and says you know when i hear a song that i like that's on the radio i'll listen to it over and over again how did you do this in the 70s and 80s when every song was great and there was so much of it <laughs> right like did you have time to listen to a song <laughs> twice because there was so much music you had to record it on cassette or go buy it. No, his so point was there wasn't time to repeat a song because they were <laughs> all so good. Yeah. So who has time to listen to a song twice? Because there's something around the bend is going to be amazing. And if you don't pay attention, you're going to miss it. And that was the attitude. And, and he was right. You think back about it. That's how we were. A song that was six months old was like, ah, that was so, you know, last season. But today we're still talking about Old Town Road. So. Well, I mean, look at something like, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know who does their music programming, but Gunn, James Gunn, an award. James Gunn does all of that. Okay, well, he deserves an award for that because he's bringing yeah. some great music back. But it's you. You hear one track. You know, you hear Fox on the Run by the Sweet. But all of a sudden, I'm back in the seventh grade, walking around Belmont, Massachusetts, and in my head, listening to Love Is Like Oxygen. And it's like you get back to those tracks. And every once in a while, I'll do this. I'll have a free moment and I'll look up the Billboard Top 100, like on Hot 100 hits from like, you know, 68 forward. And you suddenly go back and you go like, oh, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. Mm -hmm. And you're like, how do, how do I, you know, get my voice out by pulling these songs back into rotation? And like you said earlier, you know, it's cocktail and dinner. I mean, I'll I'll yeah. play Daft Punk, Digital Love, yeah, during cocktail, and people kind of look at you like, and it makes sense, but it doesn't, you know. It's one Speaking, of those. Yeah. Speaking of 
Daft Punk Digital of, one that was overlooked, or has been overlooked, I think, is Stereo Love. Remember that one? It had the sample there from Lombada. Oh, okay. okay. That's a great song. We stopped playing it. it. Why? That's a wonderful song. Well, I thought they'd get more traction out of even the Pharrell track with Niles. The um, Get Lucky? Yes, the 116 track. Like, I was living on that for a few years, that in between, you know, my Michael Jackson beat, you know, Billie Jean and that and Blurred Lines. And there was a great time when, but now it seems yeah. like we're jumping too quickly up. So that's not falling into rotation as hard. There's a lot of cool stuff that we can go back 10 years or less even, or maybe a little more and throw back in there. There's an audience out there that I think appreciates it. What are you laughing about, John? Uh, J- Joe's statement. The next Mandy Moore song I play will be my first. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, probably for me too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm I, just actually, saying. I did. I actually did uh, play Candy a, a few times when it came out and such. So it's like, wow, that's a Thank that's a flashback. To, some of us are not as young as Brian. Let's put it that she way. She had a she had a big hit over in Europe that I think I enjoyed, but it was a, a different mix. Of, I can't remember what it was though. But it was. It's decent. just. I will admit this. It's creepy though when you hear it now to think of her then as like a 15 year old. It does get a little. Uh, I think it's difficult now with the same parameters to kind of throw out the Brittany, Christina, Mandy period of young ladies doing music. I still struggle with watching any movie with Natalie Portman in it because in my mind, she's in the professional and she's 14 years old. Yeah. With the really short hair. Yeah. She was great in that, by the way. And that was creepy too. That was creepy too. At the time it wasn't creepy. Yeah. At the time, I'm just like, oh, he's taking care of her because like her family is dead. And he's a good guy teaching her how to be an assassin. <laughs> now you just think, what was going on there? Oh, oh my the god, they are changing. <laughs> By the way, if James Gunn, if you're listening, Guardians of the Galaxy three reunion, L- um, <laughs> life is a rock. That's your tune you need to work in there somewhere for the next fight scene. Yeah, that'd be a cool one. That'd be a really cool one. Yeah. For Guardians of the Galaxy, it would be perfect. I think Chicago Saturday in the Park would work in that series too. It probably would, but I think it, it, Reunion's Life as a Rock would be better. I could just see, you know, like somebody just getting their living shit kicked out of them to that song. It's kind of like what Quentin Tarantino did with Santa Esmeralda's, you know, Lord Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood in Kill Bill Volume One when um, yeah. Uma Thurman and, uh, oh, my girl, what the hell's her name? Um, Vivica Fox. No, 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 no. Lisa, Lang? Lisa, yeah, or fighting each other with the swords. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He's good with music. I mean, I think Scorsese's people still do probably the best job as far as placement. Like when you hear the end of Layla and they show two people dead in a pink Cadillac. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's he did a good job at the time, but I'm I'm all about James Gunn now. And you know, I actually see a lot of these series that are on now that do pretty good job, like mm-hmm. Stranger Things. Yeah, does a really nice job with music and yeah, also they, begin, they understand to go a little old school by the way for those of you that wonder about brian and his ability to recall all this stuff brian's not sure where his car keys or cigarettes are right now because <laughs> but i know that yeah yeah exactly there's too much crap in his head about james gunn and music but we're, ask, we're, always, we're right all good now, at something and we ask, ask him what day of the week it is he thinks it's 1989 <laughs> well something yeah just saying so Sorry, somebody else's turn now. <laughs> okay, so the next one. Yeah, yeah this uh, this one I, I looking back because last year I had Van Halen showing up as a requested band numerous times at events, but not a specific song. A couple of times, a couple of times there were. It was, um, some people had Jump, some people had Dance the Night Away. The, I think were the two that I did see. Not a big fan of either of those particular tracks. And I was kind of curious of what your version, what your track from Van Halen would be. If mm. somebody came to request that, my personal one I would probably go to is "Why Can't This Be Love." That was one of uh, after Fifty One Fifty was one of the uh, one of the songs I I kind of I liked. I but then I was more into the Hagar years than I was into. If you're into the Hagar years, maybe uh, "Finish What You Started" would be a really good one. Mm-hmm. That was a good tune. That would that would be a kind of a, it's an up tempo kind of acoustic fun roots rock kind of track. Yep. If you're going back to the Van Halen stuff, really, and it's it's almost cheating, but maybe the easy one to do would be "Dance the Night Away." 
I would have to go in a situation like that. I would establish which gen they wanted. Um, but to me, the real Van Halen will always, and I love Sammy. I just put a thing up on Facebook of him last yeah. week. Three yeah. sounding amazing. But I still think of Van Halen as David Lee Roth. I remember getting that album in my mind, just being well, completely. David wrote that stuff. He wrote just, that. And that's why it was good. I mean, one of my favorite tracks by them would have to be, and again, it's it's where are you playing it? Because it would be Unchained, mm-hmm. it would be Mean Streets, it would be Women in Love. Oh, first time I just playing a tune. Ice that's different than man. dance scores, yeah. Right, but that's the thing. It's like, oh, you want to dance? Well, here, here's Jump. That would seem <laughs> right. like the obvious, but it's the worst. Like Panama or something. Right, but that's it. Hot for tea. Like every time I get a teacher and we're doing the garter, I always say to them, Hey, for Garter, can we do Hot for Teacher? Because it's a great VH track. It's yeah. got that cool yeah. drum in the middle. But you're a teacher, and it's right. your husband. And they always go, That's oh, kind of I fun. never thought of that. And I'm like, yeah. it's either that or 38 Special. You know? Or Don't <laughs> Stand So Close to Me. And that gets creepy. Yeah. <laughs> well, but that's it. Now you got to do too much explaining to a 24-year-old. It's like. <laughs> you take the lollipop out and go, huh? Oh, I got John laughing over there. I love it when, when he just, yeah. he can't even do it anymore. It's like, oh, I'm done. I, I you know what? It. I think a lot of times it's the first hit that people run to. I mean, dance is different, but if somebody said, play me a great Van Halen song, Running with the Devil is that first track that established them and people understand as them. Ain't talking about love, Ice Cream Man. That's the first album. Yeah, Second yeah. one. The remake of You Really do, Got Me is essential with the but intro it, eruption to me like that's always yeah. a kink song i'm i can't come to grips with this represents van halen no it doesn't it's van halen covering the kinks that's the first time i ever heard it i didn't hear the kinks version until i was older Well, you're like 12 years old brian this is why sometimes we question <laughs> if you're even allowed to be up this late to be honest <laughs> i was like <laughs> six years old when that album came out or seven they, but i remember it i'd never heard anything like it it's like oh i was taking crap, cigarettes off the sleeve then kid Know your role. I'm trying to think. Six. How could you have been six? What you have, when were you born? What year, what year did that album come out? 77? 77, 78? Yeah. 78. Well, in 77, I you turned like, six. Oh, jeez. I was born in 71, dude. In May of 71. You did so sure half, half of the weird. year I was... Shit, dude. Half of the year I was five. Half the year I was six. Yeah. Well, you got that. You got, we got that going for it. Yeah. No, I mean, I I was in high school. <laughs> I was a freshman. And You're I remember old. just looking at it like... Oh, yeah. Well, remember, they, I, they I got a brother lying. older than you, and that's... I All my siblings were teenagers, and we, like, covered every demographic type of teenagers, so I was getting all their music and experiencing things precariously through them because they all had cars. I'm driving... You know, they're, they're, like, driving. My, I'm, I'm five or six of my siblings have driver's license. Because I'm right. so much younger than they are, so I'm hearing all of this stuff, yeah. and you know, smelling the fuel out of the, you know, three twenty seven dad built for my brother's fifty five Chevy, and you know, it's almost like smell o vision. I, I can smell the burning rubber to, to Ted Nugent songs. <laughs> Ted Nugent songs have an odor to me when I listen to them. Don't get me I, started on Ted Nugent. Yeah. We can talk about Ted Nugent for six hours. <laughs> I think I remember years ago, and I think you're going to get this, Brian. I think you'll get it too, John. I remember when. Mopar suddenly decided, look, we got rear wheel drive cars. We got the Magnum and I think it was the C300 or the 300 seat, whatever it was. But they were rear wheel drive in a time when everything was front wheel drive. And I remember somebody saying, I wonder why they did that. I'm like, because people like me that are older grew up driving rear wheel drive cars and we want what we had. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, it makes total sense. Because there was nothing available. Everything was pulling you, not pushing you. We all grew up with wagons and this and that. And it's going back to that. And I think music does the same thing. And I, it may not be today or tomorrow, but I think you will have those days where someone comes up and goes, man, play me some old Ted. Play me some old Aerosmith. Let me hear some old Molly Hatchet. They're going to see that music for what it was, that it was really good music. I mean, if you broke a song down, there's different riffs and licks. The lyrics made sense. The melody was good. The bridge was different. I mean, look at a song like Hold On Loosely by 38 Special. I don't think there's anything wrong in that song anywhere. 
Yeah. I think it starts with a great intro, has an incredible hook, the vocals are right on, the lyrics make sense. It was it's from a time when lyrics made sense. Do you want to tell me how the lyrics make any sense today? Well, like, go out the driveway and shake your fist at the sky on that one. You Just, kids, I, get off no, my lawn. No, I'm serious, though. How can you say that, like, back then it was like, hold on loosely, don't let go. If you cling too tightly, you know, I mean, like. Things yeah, that, I, I totally get it. But then I'm thinking to myself, my God, have you listened to Yes songs? Have you listened to anything by Jeff Lattall? Uh How about Rush? None of that shit makes oh. any sense. And it was much. <laughs> Wait a second, my friend. That. Don't start about Rush. Rush makes total sense. Just mm. listen to it. Listen to Tom Sawyer. Listen to anything off Moving Pictures, anything off 2112. I can't pretend that, you know, what is it? I can't pretend a stranger is a long forgotten friend. Like, Neil Peart was an amazing lyricist. Just Sorry. deep. Didn't very Anne Rand, very kind of deep. I'm thinking of some stuff off of 2112. How know. about Kansas? We've got a 13-minute overture, and the guy says, and the mink shall inherit the earth. And it's like, what the yes. hell is that? Okay, obviously you weren't picked on as a kid. Some of us were, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you right now. <laughs> after yes, I get it. Oh, um, yeah, that. Rock, I want everyone to know where this kid lives now, because this is someone that doesn't like us. CB <laughs> 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 Shaw, Shaw says, I thought it was hold on Lucy when I was a kid. I could totally oh, hear yeah, that. Oh, yeah, even better. I could totally hear that. Yeah. That I misunderstood the, uh, lyrics the real McCoy's hilarious. version. Yeah. Real McCoy's there, doing that. There, I, I've got a few I'll, I'll share tonight. Hold on, Sloopy. Sloopy, hang on. Uh, <laughs> they, yeah, there, there's some that I totally got wrong as a kid, and, and it's kind of embarrassing. But No, that's a, sh that's a show in itself. Yeah. She wears electric boots, a mohair suit, because I read it in a magazine. You know how long it took me to find those lyrics? What I thought he was saying before? Forget it. Yeah. Mohair suit, electric boot, magazine. Well, I, was, you know, I figured Snoopy could hold on, so could Lucy. True story. <laughs> See? Yeah. Now we've brought Ohio and Rick Derringer and the Real McCoys into the music. See how CB does this? Yeah. He's and by the way, if you want to piss off CB, he's Canadian. Now you went after Rush. Oh, Don't that's go after right. April I forgot. Oh, my God. Don't go after oh, CB, I hope, you join us. I hope you join us in the chill room tonight, CB. You'd be a fun guy to have in there. Yeah, CB would be awesome to have in there. And we're just going to listen to We're not going to take on Helix or Hart or April Hart's 1. Hart's not Canadian. Hart's from Seattle. Hart is considered Canadian because of this whole Vancouver thing. Trust me, I know, you know, but Canada thinks they own them. Just let them have <laughs> Oh, it's kind of like how it's like whole, the people in Canada, England think Northern they, Soul they, music is actually British music because they like it. It's, right, gotcha. right, right. There are times that you just figure, let the battle go so you win the war. Lose nice. the battle to win the war. Hey, yeah. gang, we're going to wrap things up with tonight's show. I put the link for the chill room. It's in the comment section, so you can go click on that and pop out there where the music talk will continue, and you guys will be able to listen to as as Brian can play some of these songs. I've been playing them on the side, and I knew about half of them. Did you know Reunion Life is a Rock? Oh, my God, is he still on that one? No, I didn't, and it's like, oh, my God, this doesn't sound like something from the 60s, at least in that little clip I listened to. Yeah, it's 74. Uh, it, yeah. it said it was off, to, off off a 70s hit disc, but it... Next week, it'll yeah. be Brian's version of Blood Rock, DOA. Why haven't you heard this? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, guys for, on me. thank you guys for being with us tonight. Have yourself a wonderful evening, and uh, remember, chill, chill room link is in the comments. Bye-bye.